Okay, so we're back here. Everything's going great. This is going super smoothly. Uh, we're going to do best multiplayer game of 2020, right? Yes. Had to be released this year. Uh, okay. Well, uh, I think it's Animal Crossing New Horizons. Um, that game, I mean, it embodied multiplayer for uh, throughout 2020. I mean, we saw people host birthday parties, Animal Crossing, get-togethers. We saw talk shows. Wedding proposals. Um, like marriage. Wedding, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, people literally turned anim their Animal Crossing islands into social hangouts uh, for their uh, close friends and family. So that is, uh, without a doubt, my, uh, my favorite multiplayer game of 2020. Yeah. I, her. I, uh, um, I agree as well. Go ahead, Bill. I was just going to say, uh, you know, I, I play a lot of multiplayer games, but um, Animal Crossing kind of just hit a positive nerve with me this year, and it connected me to people. Like, the multiplayer games I typically play, I play with them the same people for the last decade. Um, and Animal Crossing, I played games with most of you, and I've, I've never played a multiplayer game with David. I've never played a multiplayer game with Donovan. Um, or at least if I have, it's like a one-off, but... Uh, like even today, David and I are talking about like visiting each other's islands, and that's months and months later. I played with people who aren't even traditional gamers, but you know they they got into Animal Crossing, and it, it opened up another social aspect for me in a year when I really needed another social aspect. So, yeah, Animal Crossing was probably the most impactful multiplayer game in terms of like. Can someone explain to me why it's not why it's multiplayer game and not co-op game for Animal Crossing? Co-op would mean that you progress together. You can't yeah. even progress in the game when someone else is on your island. Right. Yeah, you don't even... You can't, can't like, change your yeah, house you when ever, someone's in your house. You can't pay off Tom Nook while someone's on your island. But I thought you, you could fly even... and, like, pick up stuff from other people's islands and fly yeah, back Yeah, you can island. literally you can drop things on the ground to share with people. That's, That's a large... A large... It is not. Okay. Because there's, it, I mean, it, you can you can drop a gun in Valorant so. and give it to somebody, but that, I don't. Here's think an example of because Greg, you're just so fucking dumb. Here's an example of how it's <laughs> multiplayer. <laughs> Everyone can come to my island right now. No, I'm gonna spell it out for you with fucking oh, ABC blocks that are made out of wood. <laughs> Eight people can come to my island right now. I have created a race on this island that everyone can compete in. Right yeah. when you get to my island, there's a wheel, you spin it. It tells you how many laps you have to run. And then you run, I time it. And that's the, the cool thing, right? Like that that's not a built-in mode. Asif can just like- I made that out you of just, thin You air. just make it up. I, I, did this, I did a similar thing where Amy and I, for fun, we would sneak up on each other and just bop each other on the head with yeah, nets. Yeah, playing tag we, with the net. And we or decided to play hide tag. hide and seek on hide the and island. Seek, hide and seek is really e good. Even little things like, oh, remember Asif, there was that time we played during the meeting, one of the times, and we okay, we were on your island and you wanted to take a group photo. So I would occasionally leave and then from the side I'd photo bomb, just come up and come up yeah. behind someone with a net. It was just a thing I made up that you could do because that's, you know, something the it's, game lets you if, do. If you have zero imagination, you're dead right, Greg. This isn't a multiplayer game. But if you have <laughs> even the, the tiniest shred of imagination, this game is full <laughs> of multiplayer experience. A it's ton. like the same you can, reason. Like, you can just go swimming with your friends for fun. Like, yeah. it, it, they can, and the, 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 I'd say one of the, the most interesting things is that like Sam, for instance, lives in Australia. He has fish that are available to us that aren't available on our island so that we can progress on his island. And like, I lost count of how many times I would visit Lauren and Sam's island and just go fishing. And Lauren and Sam's island was the place to be, right. especially for Bill. Bill's like, Sam, maybe you have stuff to do right now, but if your Animal Crossing island isn't open, we're gonna have a problem. Just, just turn it <laughs> on and go back just, to work, Sam. Just turn yeah, it on and go back to island is literally a race. I built a track that you can run around my island and I will time you and whoever has the best time wins. That sounds like a multiplayer game to me. And you can't really help people that much either, because if I'm not mistaken, and someone correct me if they've changed this, but I can't just take some rare fish and drop it no, for you, you to can't. pick up. Like you you've got to come and actually get that on. You got to catch like, that like fish. You said, your progression is still tied to your efforts. You know, like, I so, so go ahead, TJ. 
So we're strict. So just to be clear, we're strictly staying to this idea that the best multiplayer game should be a game where you're not using friends or allies to help move the game forward because that's going to be in the co-op category, correct? I mean, I don't even subscribe to that. A progression through a series of goals. Yeah, I can. I like play the game. I can tell you. As far as like a multiplayer experience that I feel like actually re that like super relies on the multiplayer experience to work functionally and it is awesome because of it is Phasmophobia. That yeah. didn't even come out. Early access though well, doesn't count. Uh, is it? Oh damn it! Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah early access, but <laughs> it's it's oh, stuff like that. You it's got early like access. Early God, access so positive to D. But like that's that what, is a perfect example. But yes, that is a multiplayer game, TJ. That, that's uh, so I gotta look around again. It's like, yeah, it's I mean, the, yeah, early access to the, throws a wrench and stuff. No, but, I mean, yeah, these are games that were released this year. Right, fair, right, fair. It's, um, yeah, like a Animal Crossing for me has been one discovery after another, and that that comes a lot from not playing the franchise maybe more than 30 minutes total on GameCube back in the day. Like, I, I keep going back to this, but when I texted Asif, so what can I do? And he basically said to paraphrase, whatever you want. I didn't realize that would even apply to multiplayer. There were just things I did. Like, I'm actually thinking, I was thinking of content that would be fun to stream. And I'm thinking of organizing a scavenger hunt where mm -hmm. I give you know staff members a list and I can go and bury things around my island. And if you, I think if you're best friends, you can dig yes. on islands. Yeah, you can dig a yeah. hole. Yeah. And like, that's just something that you can do and the game allows for it. And that's kind of how Animal Crossing has changed my thinking within that game. Like, I don't even think of like, oh, well, I can only deathmatch and deathmatch. This isn't like capture the flag or king of the hill or whatever. This is kind of whatever I want it to be. Um, even like like um, sharing turnip prices and island codes where turnips were selling, uh, and just kind of like kind of helping your friends out, um, passing each other in the queue <laughs> when you finally get to, to your turn to fly to the island and sell your turnips. I've just had so much fun with this game, uh, which is one reason that, like, yeah, the multiplayer certainly has a lot of uh, annoyances, but none of that has really meant anything to me because it's not like I have to participate in it. If I close my island gates, it's just me doing whatever the hell I want. If I open my gates, I'm opening myself to, to everything and going to someone else's island for that. And, but you, there's not a whole lot of griefing. No, there's, uh, there's really not. Like, if even someone, like, the reason people feel comfortable inviting strangers over their islands is because they can't like take a shovel and start digging up your flower beds or whatever yeah. right like really this goes back to what i've what i've talked about with asif and bill and everyone all throughout the year but most of the interactions in animal crossing and i say most because maybe there's one i'm not thinking of but they're all generally positive there's a an intrinsic spirit of cooperation like it, it's not explicitly a co-op game but everyone just wants to cooperate as in coexist and i think that's um, like you're really basically as the as the villager you're tasked with so much of improving the island and all of your yeah. all of your fellow islanders are cheering for you they yeah. want you to succeed you come up with the name for the island they're like that's an awesome idea you know like, it's yeah like yeah the, that game is overwhelmingly positive and, even and that extends things, like... into the multiplayer when the it's multiplayer, not yeah. it, when someone comes to your island it's david is here to play it's not yeah. which is actually to do battle why, with david which is what actually why i think there's that pause because everyone is made to feel special like hey david's here and yeah. everyone has to acknowledge that that i'm here that bill's here that tj's here like yes that the constant pauses are kind of annoying but it's also kind of cool to feel special for that 15 seconds or whatever it is and little things too like if if you're near an ai character while you're fishing and you catch a fish they'll clap for you and that's the ai but i've noticed people yeah the bill's doing it right now like there was a time when bill and i were on osis island and i noticed him like what waiting trying to catch a fish so i just stopped and when he got it i was like and then yeah. just ran on because it's just all these ways you can just kind of it reminds me 
uh, TJ could probably relate to this. I don't know if Sam's here, but it's kind of like in, in Dark Souls where, you know, two of your objectives will ring the bells. And if you were certain places in the world, you could hear those bells ringing. And it was just kind of like, cool, way to go. Good for you. And uh, oh, Animal um, Crossing just had a lot of moments like that for me. I feel like that's a good segue to what I actually do want to make an argument for as far as like my favorite multiplayer experience this year. And it just kind of co goes hand in hand with it. Let me talk about Demon Souls, aka the hard mode, easy mode <laughs> that is multiplayer in a Souls board game. This is this will be fun, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, people always talk about like Demon Souls and Dark Souls is too hard. You know how you fix that? You invite but you invite other people into your world, and then you go rat pack whatever you're trying to defeat. Can't even do it unless you beat the first boss. I think that's fair. I think that's fair, honestly. Like, they, they, you need mm. to introduce that first level so that you feel like, oh, wow. So, you look, can't look make an argument that this makes it more accessible, where if you suck, you can't even get to that point. Oh, no, no, no. It's not about accessibility. Here's here's the origin of how that came about. Miyazaki was driving home one night in a, in a, in a snowstorm. And they came to a point where there was this snow that was, too, uh, this hill that was too covered in snow and ice to drive up. So completely unorganized, no police there or anything, a person behind the car at the foot of the hill would help push them up. Then they'd get back in their car and the person behind them would get out and help push. And Miyazaki drove away thinking like, it's really neat that that happened, but I'll never see that person again. So I kind of really appreciate this experience that we just had. And I, I realized how much I needed them in that moment and how someone needed me. That's kind of what uh, Demon Souls Demon Souls done on it does on a larger scale and it, it, scale and it's one reason why that game was comparatively res restrictive with multiplayer um, as opposed to Dark Souls games like there's no built-in way to meet up with friends the way you do it is okay TJ and I want to play TJ you know how in three two there's that or in one one there's that cart with a bunch of boxes. I'm going to put my summon sign down under that cart, and that's where you'll look. Now, in Demon Souls Remake, there's actually a password system, so you can group up. But right. I feel like the reason that you had to beat that first level is so that you could feel like, wow, that was really hard. I I, I see the greater value in having someone help me with this boss fights and then helping other people with the boss fights after that. I also feel like if, if you could summon in that first level, it, you might walk away thinking, wow, this is, game is really easy. It's so boring. I wanted a challenge and now I'm not going to play it because it's just... Yeah, so and so let's talk about the hard mode aspect of that, which is taking on a corporeal form and opening yourself to the possibility of enemy players invading your world looking to kill you so that they can take on their corporeal form for free. And that is like, it's a, uh, it's an experience. Like, it, it goes both ways in such an interesting way that has always been kind of unique to the Soulsborne series. I had, like, you know the old monk fight. David. Oh, there, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a part where you actually, like, even if you've been avoiding fan, like, avoid, avoiding phantoms for most of the game, like, avoid, avoiding dealing with invaders for most of the game, there's a part where you actually can't deal with a boss unless you invite an invader in your world. And yeah. I had, like, this experience where this same guy kept, kept invading the world over and over again, and he had just... I mean, they, they had just a little bit better of a, of a tactic than I did, so they kept killing me. So what do I do? I throw down my sign. We I wait for someone to show up. We go in there. We just kick the shit out of that dude. <laughs> so, so, so what TJ is talking about is there's actually a boss that's player controlled. And this was like the biggest coincidence, but it was really cool. Also, when this game was new in 2009, I there were chatty threads going and I wrote about what happened. And it turned out, one of the guys who responded, I can't remember who it was, I fought a Shacker. A Shacker was the boss in my game. And we were, like, it was really close. Like, he beat me and we each had, like, a sliver of health and he got on that last hit. But that's just uh, one of the, the multiplayer experience you, sh you can have. Not only cooperative, but realize, like, oh, I know the guy who I just fought. And now I hope I can be the boss in his world so I can, like, troll the shit out of him. Um, yeah, the, the multiplayer in that in in those games is really special. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's 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 just a lot of fun. 
Yeah, and I mean, like that—that is—that has always been. I'm all for more accessibility in games, and I'm all and I and I am one of the people that will like champion, like someday putting a difficulty slider in a from from in a Soulsborne game. However, I can't make that argument without also like acknowledging that the that the multiplayer in that game is kind of that system that allows you to eat to both ease the difficulty and make it more difficult. Yeah, it's it's a really fine balance. Like you have to be in corporeal form to summon friends, but that doesn't mean it's just going to be that easy. Like you'll also be invaded, and so you might need a friend to come in. A friend meaning anyone whose soul sign you find on the ground, so that you have that advantage. It's it's also interesting speaking to sandbox elements. I don't remember if Demon Souls can do this, but in some of the Souls games, you can, as an invader, run around and kill all the host's enemies for him. So sometimes mm -hmm. invaders can actually help you. But sometimes they'll also start that way, lulling you into a false sense of security, and then turn around and attack you. So you think you have an enemy who's an ally, who's actually an, an enemy. It's like this double double cross sort of. You thing. can also you could be so dastardly about it. Do you know what I did? Mm -hmm. I in uh, in Tower of Latria, I had the th the the grave robber ring that makes you yeah harder to detect to phantoms. I ran through all of the enemies without killing them and uh, and equipped the grave robber ring and I just let him deal with everything for me and then I cut him down right after a fight. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's great. It just that that game I think is so special and one reason it was remade was because those experiences still feel very fresh today. Um, and yeah, it's that's yeah, that's a great choice for, for best multiplayer. Donovan, are you not going to nominate Pokemon for their online? Came out last year. Oh, that's, that's right. This year, right? Damn. Pokemon came out 2019. Ozzy. <laughs> Jackbox. I think uh, Jackbox was especially more important this year than any other year because of the circumstances surrounding the pandemic. But I do want to give Jackbox credit for they tried this year more than perhaps uh, any of the years before because it, they're they're at a point where they could just like repackage a bunch of their old games and just do like some simple gimmicks and mm -hmm. you know call it a day not all their ideas hit i'm gonna admit that but some of the ideas that they tried with like the devil in the details for example which is it's a co-op competitive game where you have like five people getting together they're doing like among us style tasks but and you're trying to chase a high score because you got to hit a score threshold in order to like actually get to the end but at the same time it, you're also vying to be the individual winner and to do that you can kind of cheat and like take on some like selfish tasks and like that boosts your own score but it dangers the rest of the group and then you it, it uh if you go overboard it's like game over for everybody so that was a cool idea that they tried i give them a lot of credit for that Blather Around was so much fun like that I had with, with, when I was playing this with the family. And that's that's the, the, the whole COVID thing just can't be overstated because like I haven't seen family in like since March. I haven't seen friends since March. And getting together on Zoom and being able to play something like Jackbox has been so therapeutic and been so so integral in bringing us all together. So that that Jackbox came out with this particular collection around this time, like you know what, kudos to them. So that, that and they yeah. gave us a new Quiplash. They did give us a new Quiplash, and I love yeah. the new Quiplash. <laughs> I, the new Quiplash is really good. I, I thought uh, Party Pack Seven was pretty fun. Uh, Ozzy, double the details. Was good. That game was chaotic, with you having to like give instructions to people because a lot yes. of those tasks, it's kind of like a like I know there's one where like somebody has to give you a ride somewhere, and you're the passenger, and you see like the <laughs> map, you see the map of all the turns and stuff, but they don't see it. Tell them, all right, take this left. Okay, take this right. No, no, no. Go back. It's it's a it's good like old fashioned uh, co op stuff as well. Yeah, I, I, there's a lot of moving parts in Devil in the Details, and you know what? If they had released that as standalone, it would have been fine. But that it's in the entire collection, really cool. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. And then Clubhouse Games, who nominated that? I believe that was also me. And Clubhouse Games sort sort of also had that same similar COVID argument, but also that Nintendo put together like a bunch of these like very simple like very simple games very simple classic games and added an online component to a lot of them mm -hmm. that's a cool idea like I spent days playing darts online and like the way they've actually like integrated all these games they're all play they all play perfectly well like not all the games work but you know what 
the ones that do are so much fun to play. So I like Clubhouse. And Can I like you that beat game. Hex on Expert? I did not. It's like impossible. Yeah. There's like, at some point, Hex becomes impossible. I love that game, but... Hair, I, in, Hair in the Hounds is another one that's impossible. Yeah. I also love like how they straight up stole games like Yahtzee and just yes. call them something else. And you can play it Dice online, Asif. It's so awesome. <laughs> but, um, you know, like Clubhouse games, I've always wanted to learn how to play Shogi and Go, and that is, like, to its credit, the game the game that got me to sit down and do that this year. I don't know if I would have if, like, it wasn't, like, a pandemic year, but, like, it's really cool how much not only it, like, lets, gives you the opportunity to play those games, but also helps you learn them along the way. I really appreciate, like, the tutorial system in that game for games that I was unfamiliar with. Yeah. We've had, well, it's we've had probably a lot of not going to win, but it definitely deserved a nomination. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, oh. like, simple games in that in that collection are they have a lot of replay value, but somehow they yeah. screwed up checkers. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll, but I'm just going to say, if you haven't played Darts Online, go play Darts Online. That's fun. Darts is very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all have more to say about the 51 Clubhouse games in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I also I just wanted to mention Bleeding Edge. I don't think yes. that game gets enough love, like at all. It uh, doesn't. It's, it's awesome. Also, an arena game, but it's a brawler. It's got hero mechanics. The heroes are actually good. The art style is actually really good. Sound design is good. That was Ninja Fun. Theory, right? Like, it's a Ninja really, Theory. Yeah, game, really good. Which is like kind of wacky. Like they go from Hellblade to Bleeding Edge, but. Shows ah, two different teams. Yeah, yeah, but it just shows you how big that company has become and. It's the perfect it's... Game Pass game. Like, it's, I wish, it, you know, I wish more people were playing it. Uh, but I, I think it's an excellent multiplayer game that came out. I, that, that I like think something it... we should have brought up for quite a sloppy. Yeah. Too late yeah I, was, I was just looking it up, and a lot of people were like, hey, anyone still playing? And I, like, it looks, I'm checking out the art style here. It looks pretty cool. I, I think it's it fits great. Ninja Theory's mantra of making budget AAA games. Mm-hmm. You know, they it's, don't, they it's... don't bet the company on anything they do. Yeah, and but it's a solid game, and yeah, like some of those characters are just super fun to play as. Like Nidhog is like super like Swedish heavy metal. Yeah, that guitar, with, like, the, his ultimate with the guitar is awesome. Yeah, yeah I I love that game. It, it's yeah. one of those like if I wasn't playing Rocket League so damn much, I'd probably be playing Bleeding Edge more often. I try to get my group of friends to play it or something, especially because it's a Game Pass title. Um, but I just wanted to mention that uh, Valorant came out this year. That's a multiplayer game. It is indeed that. Yep, we made we made our argument for Valorant back in uh, the free to play category. Play. Yes. So go watch that video instead of us talking about Valorant more. Uh, uh, yeah. Are we ready to vote then? Is I vote no. Happening? One more nominee. Actually, two oh, more nominations. Golf with your friends. Went 1.0 this year. I love Golf with Your Friends. It's an that, excellent a, multiplayer game. It's a great multiplayer game, and you know what? You're not taking turns. Everybody's just going at once. <laughs> it's chaos. Yes. It's like, it's like chaotic putt-putt. Yes! <laughs> oh. and I love, I'm a sucker for putt-putt games, and I, was, I especially love good putt-putt games, and that's definitely what Golf with Your Friends is. It's great physics. Yes! Like, excellent physics models in that game. Excellent level design. It's super fun. Um, no, I, I agree completely. Uh, PGA 2K21 doesn't have a bad multiplayer game, uh, version either, but I'm not nominating it here. And then mm. the one I think we kind of left off was Fall Guys. Fall Guys is a pretty good multiplayer game in itself, and it's so much it's so much fun to get everybody together in a battle royale setting that's not just a shooter. It's just, just like a bunch of like a bunch of like obstacle course get wipeout style games. And I so- wish, and also for the sake of like Fall Mania, you know, Grand Pooh Bear's esport that he created for the game. Yes. It would be nice if they had private lobbies. Yes, we yep. like we we want our chatty people to join us in a, in a round. Of it would guys. be the and ultimate exactly... Jack Battle game if you could just have fifty people join. It would have won the Jack Battle of the Year if we had private lobbies. Yep. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's why I I don't dig Fall Guys is because like they really didn't think about the multiplayer implications of their game before launching it, and it's they're so freaking obvious. Like, yeah, there's so many I, things I think that, it's a scale I, thing, though. This is it's it's a it's a small company. Mediatonic's not big. 
I know Devolver is a little bit bigger. But yeah, it give wasn't, it time. It'll get there. It's, it's I feel like it's I one love... of those things where they had to ship it in the best condition they could, and then maybe that's something down the road that they can add on, and it would be a yeah. huge quality of life improvement to the game. I love Fall Guys. I absolutely adore Fall Guys. I enjoy the Wipeout style feel of it, and I love the chaos. I love the the funny stories that it makes. I love the uh, the reactions that it makes. I love trolling people with grabs and and pushing them off of platforms. Like, well, go watch any of like Sonic Fox. Oh God, you're that movies. guy. <laughs> and uh, just watching like the way in which you can help or troll each other in the game is adorable. It's it's one of the most adorably trolly games of all time, but uh, I can't. I, I the reason why I haven't argued for it anywhere in here is that, like I, I acknowledge it since, and I hope I, I you know what I look forward to putting it in a category for most improved game next year if they put in the work, because that's something that I want to see continue to grow, continue to do well. I I hope they pull it off. I may have been the person the person to mention it first, but I really don't like the game. It's not that fun to me. I, I find it annoying. I think it's tedious. I don't like many <laughs> of the mini games. I don't like waiting but, 10 minutes for my friends to finish playing. Well, then don't and die. Then... But at its core, <laughs> like, it's... I don't have fun playing it. On paper, I should love this game. But in reality, in practice, I don't. And that's why I'm, I'm not voting for it. But it it's undeniable that it had an impact this year in, in the multiplayer gaming space. So it definitely mm. needs to be mentioned, but it doesn't happen in my book. And if you have friends playing, Blake, you should support your friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Freedom Tell on. them that while we're playing Rocket League sometime. <laughs> <laughs> you wow. steal a goal from this guy. It's like... <laughs> you'll never forget. <laughs> but, like, but like in a typical Battle Royale fashion, if, I, if, I, if my teammates survive but I don't, I'm going to sit there and be like, hell yeah, get in there. Get to that, get to that crown. I actually like that element of it that you can at least spectate your friends and like cheer them on. I, yeah. I think that's cool. That's mm -hmm. like Fall Guys is actually one of my favorite like spectator features of the of this year. Once yeah. again, it would benefit from having a real spectate mode. Yes, if I agree. At, if you look at the command center that Grand Pooh Bear has to use to actually stream Fall Mania, he's got like four R RTMP streams coming in, and like it's a nightmare. Like. What they're doing with Fall Mania is really damn impressive, given the constraints of that game. Mm -hmm. And I would just shout out Fall Mania as an element of why it's so... That I don't think you would have this kind of... Uh, I, you know, there have been stories in it, too, like Tim the Tap Man, like all these things that have happened this year in that game. That that uh, charity that charity contest they did with brands that were trying to get their skin into the game, mm -hmm. that was legitimately one of the funniest stories I got to write about this year. Yep. And it just kept it's, going. It was like, oh man, look at this. This company came in. This company came in. Yeah, it was, that was fun. Um, and now you got Doom Guy in there. Put it together, make it better, and I want to. And and I would I would happily try to vote for that game for uh, most improved game in twenty twenty one. Yeah, I but, hope we're talking about it next year. I, I think we will be. I don't think that game's going away. Uh, and I think with the success, they'll be able to fund some of these quality of life improvements. They're, that we they're coming up with like a lot of new game ideas, and like they're yeah. they're they're shaking things up with seasons. So we'll we'll hear more from Fall Guys. Yep. Okay, let's put it to a vote. Best multiplayer game of twenty twenty. TJ, TJ, any other year, man, I would uh, I would I would go with you to help you pick up the blood stain of of Demon Souls for best multiplayer game of twenty twenty, but animal crossing uh just kind of rocked my world this year it was all fresh and new to me whereas demon souls i loved its multiplayer 11 years ago i love it now um and yeah i have to go i have to go animal crossing yeah i understand you gotta go where the, you gotta go where the sun is and praise it and it's not in demon souls because that's, that's dark souls <laughs> right yeah, that's, that's true yeah that's right i have to find my son i found my son in animal crossing it's in animal crossing this year it is it is <laughs> I respect okay. the arguments for Animal Crossing, and I'll give it my vote. Wow. Steve? I'm going with Animal Crossing, but I got to shout out Mario 35. That's a good one. Um, and you have 83. Do you have more than 83 wins now? Uh, no, I have. I haven't played it in a couple of days, so I still have 83. Okay. 
played. Well, I was I was gonna say hey. something about it, but I wasn't sure if we were considering it to be multiplayer. Or there it is. Yeah, it counts. But I don't think it's I don't think you're gonna find much support. No. Not loading that's, process that's for, it. for Animal Crossing. Awesome. Um, I'm just gonna go with Animal Crossing. Wow. Yeah. Sam. Um, as much as I love Demon Souls, I gotta I gotta respect Animal Crossing for being able to run around that island with my partner and go to a museum date when the museum was locked. So, it's I mean, you're lucky it has treasure hunts and races because I just looked it up at scavenger hunts because like otherwise it would be a pure cooperative game without those two. The, the okay, Greg, pick, yeah. pick your fucking Call of Duty bullshit. Let's move no, on. No, I'm not, uh, Bernie Sanders. No, vote for a video game. <laughs> Bernie Sanders, <laughs> the game. Okay, Greg's fucking done. Just, it was funny because Austin made a good point about Watts multiplayer game. David made the point about scavenger, but everything else Bill and David said was like co-op. I clap my hands when you get a fish. That's cooperative. It's, it's not People a, visit it, my island. That's cooperative. Like it's. it's even, I'm not saying so, you should win. I'm just saying that over, the man. arguments They're were over. very poor for it, other than the strat, just scavenger hunt. And okay, race. I got you it's down for war zone, Greg. I didn't say war zone. I'm putting you down for war zone. <laughs> That's what the bros would vote for. I'm staying with uh, Demon Souls because it was like my favorite. It was my favorite multiplayer experience this year. And Demon why haven't we played yet? Because I've been working on so many, st so much other things. Yeah, <laughs> so same. many things to do. Same, <laughs> same honestly. Just gonna take same. a moment and uh, umbasa when you can, DJ. Umbasa. umbasa. <laughs> Uh, I'm AC New Horizons as well. And that means Krabs is also AC New Horizons. It does. It does. Which he gave his blessing, so it's yeah. not as much of a big Bill? Uh, Animal Crossing all the way for me. Animal Josh? Crossing. Animal Crossing. I gotta give it to Gotta give it to my boys in the AC. Still Dude, got Josh my Shack is, News room. Josh's Still got my Shack Island. News room. Josh's Still visit, Island, cry, man. man. Like, it was a Zelda temple. Like getting around that island, it is really, really fun, actually. Yeah. Enjoyed all my time chilling with the boys in AC. Well, it seems like Animal Crossing is going to win. I'm going to vote for Bleeding Edge. Here you guys. Nice. So you we guys. have to get to, we have to get together over winter break and do some co op. Okay, so that's pretty much unanimous. Um, I think it's pretty funny that we didn't even nominate a Call of Duty game. Or any like Valorant, I guess, was dominated. But okay, I so Valorant was at least worth nominating. Yeah, not, Valorant was worth not. Like I think FPS games should be nominated for this category. Uh, so it was kind of surprised that Doom Eternal's multiplayer definitely didn't deserve yeah. it. But <laughs> I, I guess we should have put that in Quietus Lobby as well. <laughs> Warzone. <laughs> Or what is it called? War no, mode I, or battle yeah. mode? Ba battle, battle mode. Yeah. We don't even know what it's called. <laughs> War mode. It's and it's like match. the most. It's, it's the most generic. I, I love the Pete. Uh, How are you gonna Pete ship Hines. a Doom without deathmatch? I interviewed Pete Hines for the. How are you gonna ship a Doom without deathmatch? And I asked That's him that. He's like multiplayer too. He's, he's, he's like, well, we don't feel that uh, deathmatch is what the players want. I'm like, the reason you had to retroactively add it to Doom 2016 is because there was an outcry <laughs> for the lack of deathmatch. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that uh, was the breakouts that I pulled from your story. That, like, yeah, the yeah, yeah, exactly. So exactly. we're done with this. The best yeah. multiplayer game of 2020, which I'm sure we're going to get shit for, is Animal Crossing New Horizons. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.